What do you do when other people in your life are not urgent and they drive you freaking crazy because you can't get stuff done? So um, welcome to 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. I do this Monday through Friday. I'm excited for you to be here. Hi, you guys, as you're jumping on. Hey, you guys, as you're jumping on. I want to talk to you guys about, um, first of all, not allowing other people to steal your power especially when it comes to big goals in your life. So recently we had a situation where a client wanted to a client wanted to move their deposit from one program to another program. And I got to commend this this client of ours because they didn't give up, which is fantastic. But what normally would happen with someone is that you get frustrated because you're trying like for instance in this situation she was trying to move a deposit from one program to another program. And she wasn't getting a clear answer. Uh, in my accounting department, wasn't giving her a clear answer. In my admin department, they weren't giving her a clear answer. And the problem was is that they were actually waiting on me because every time somebody asked me about this person, I kept saying, yeah, that's fine. I just want to talk to them. And of course, my calendar, um, you know, between right now and about four o'clock this afternoon is jam packed. Right. And so although I had the best intentions of getting connected with this person to talk to them, I had no intentions in not allowing them to move their deposit. But it's still on their end. They have no idea what's going on. All they know is that they can't get a clear answer and it's frustrating as all, all can be. So I want to I want to ask you to be conscious of moments like this inside your life. Be conscious, conscious of these moments because truthfully, I mean, I'll just go back to my client, right? Um, truthfully, obviously, I can help her reach a goal, um, a financial dream and future, and, and I'm a good person. I'd like to think I'm a good person. But, you know, the person that is, you know, on the other end of my accounting department, my admin department, my admin department, my accounting department work for me everybody's doing the right thing, but it feels like to the client or the person on the other end that they can't get a clear answer. So these are frustrating moments. It happens with our plumbers. It happens with our husbands. It happens with our wives. It happens with like our business coaches. It happens all over the place. What do you do in those moments? So here's what I recommend. Those, those moments are not moments that, um, they're not moments that are going to evaporate from your life, but, your character is defined in these moments, right? So how you deal with these moments determines often on if you're gonna reach the visions or the goals that you want. So I'm happy to say that this client is definitely frustrated and we're sending her flowers and, and you know, we, we feel that she was in the right, right? Like she was in the right. She should have been able to get an answer that much quicker. And so first, first and foremost, as a CEO, be okay with when you screw up. <laughs> or you make mistakes that you weren't urgent enough that have grace for yourself and just say sorry. Like don't be righteous about it and defend your position. Just be sorry, you know, and apologize for it. People, if they can feel um, an apology, often that will diffuse the situation. If you're on the other side and you're a client or a customer or somebody that's getting a service from somebody else and they're not like up to your par, right? Like they're just, they're not being urgent enough. Remember that you have moments like that in your life, moments that you're trying to make a decision and you're not moving quick enough, moments that, you know, you don't have time to deal with something, but you know it's important, but you just haven't, you haven't been able to create the space to do it. Know that, you know, not only just a customer or a, or a client and in that frustrating situation, but you're also on the other side when you are the provider of something and you're not making decisions or you're not urgent enough. So I just want to welcome you to just say, don't throw out, don't throw out the baby without the bathwater. Don't throw out the bathwater without the baby, whatever that, whatever that, that uh, slogan is. Like, don't, don't just cave. Don't give up. You know, weak people give up. They give up and then they're righteous about the reason why they gave up because they deserved more because they are entitled about that. Don't do that. Because often you're in exactly the right place of where you need to be and follow things through despite the way you feel. Follow things through despite the way somebody else is interacting in your space. So here's a good rule of thumb. What if you were to just, what if you were to just subscribe to the thought process of nobody's trying to hurt you, nobody's trying to ignore you, and absolutely everybody's doing the best that they can. I'll tell you with our client that was trying to move her deposit, um, 
at every every moment that my team reached out to me to ask me um, for approval on move whenever there's money being moved they ask for approval and um, and my intentions were always to like just get on the phone with this person and talk to them or send them an email I just didn't make the time in my calendar does that make me a bad person no so here's the deal don't treat me like one don't treat me like one right so this isn't about that person this is about you be the type of person that has grace for other people your emotional triggers are dangerous your emotional triggers are dangerous they will prevent you from getting married they will prevent you from following through on a relationship they will prevent you from staying in a relationship they will prevent you from growing a incredible business um, I'll take it to another step forward uh, another step further uh, you know be careful of what you say you don't want you know one time in my life I didn't want to do a show like this I, I and I defended it I was righteous about the fact that I didn't have a need to be in front of people to I did I used to say I don't want to be a celebrity I have no need to be on TV I don't want to be on stages in fact I thought the speaker author world was a cheesy sleazy car salesman type of a business and that's the truth now I didn't know what I didn't know but the truth is is that I wanted it so bad I was afraid to let myself dream it and I can tell you everything from my marriage to having my child to um, to living on the ocean to building my new home to driving the g-wagon Mercedes that I have today do you know how many times I put the brakes on in my life and said I don't want that I, I she drives that car I mean I'm just not like that and there's like this bitchiness of righteousness that comes out that we start saying I don't have a need for that or I don't want that anyway I don't want a million dollar business what am I gonna do with a million dollar business I don't want a million and some of you guys are fine on that but if I said hey why don't you build out a 500 million dollar business then there's a we have this ceiling we all have this ceiling somewhere inside of our belief system of where we stop dreaming it's where we stop dreaming because past that moment feels scary like what am I gonna have to give up to get that right and so what happens is fear starts taking over the dream and instead of being committed to allowing yourself to see what's completely possible in your life which the first step by the way is unhooking from emotional triggers around people who are not urgent enough for you around people who are not satisfying your needs around people who are not treating you the way that they should be treating you because you're spending money with them right like that's the first stage and then when you can unhook from that stage the other stage of the bigger dreams you can unhook from the fear and allow yourself to keep going so I just ask you today what are you saying inside your life or your day what do you absolutely and hopefully you are absolutely righteous about a decision that you're not gonna make right now a decision you're not gonna make right now or does it look like you're saying to yourself maybe somebody's giving maybe a business coach is giving you advice around doing something you're saying I don't want that I, I'm gonna it's right now it's my kids time in my life I've got baby I've got little kids and that's the season I'm in and I don't want to miss any moments of their life bullshit bullshit I call bullshit on that I, I do because I was with my son every second of the time that he was little and I built my calendar around breastfeeding I took an hour and a half break every hour and a half actually an hour and 15 minutes and I still grew the company to multiple millions I breastfed I played because he took about literally five minutes of boob he was quick and I breastfed and I played with him and I was with him for that hour and a half break right and then I would go back to work <clears throat> um, I drive my child to school I pick him up I go to the park with him I go to the beach with him I sit down and I play blocks with him I know every book my son loves right now the nanny doesn't know it well the nanny does too but I know it as well because I'm so connected to my child right and I'm always looking for more ways to be better to to spend more time to all of that but the truth is is the minute he gets off school I'm with him right so my point is is that there's no either ors on 
you being a millionaire and not having a family or you know your wife being ambitious and not cooking dinner and now you're like oh why isn't she cooking dinner for me there's agreements that can be made that everybody can be happy and so but it causes you to unhook from emotional triggers so that you're not entitled and and saying that things can't change or evolve meaning that things look differently as they evolve but be a flexible person, not only with the people who, let's say, emotionally trigger a response in you, like the woman who couldn't get a straight answer from my team. And I give her kudos, by the way, because she honestly, she stuck in there, right? But the emotional frustration she must have felt never goes away, right? She still lived that moment of emotional frustration. And you have got to do everything you can to unhook from those feelings so that you don't waste those moments of your life. Pass the tests. I can hear my son scream. He just got up. He's going, ah! so sweet. Um, and so anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you because I never wanted to speak on stages. I never wanted to be an author. Now I'm actually gonna go after being a New York Times bestseller. Um, I never wanted to, uh, I never wanted to do live streams. Oh my God, I fought that one. I was like, I don't need to be a live stream girl because I like to be behind the scenes in my company. Imagine that, right? Um, shoot. I mean, I made up reasons why I didn't get married or stick to relationships because they weren't the one. I'm, a, I'm just trying to make you aware that make your commitment stronger than your emotional triggers. Make your commitment stronger than your emotional triggers and your life will really do well. You'll make tons of money. You will stop pretending like your family, your kids, um, money. Money is not a problem for you not taking action. Do you know what it is? It's commitment. You'll never have the money that you want for every dream that you have. That's how this game of life works. Your visions are bigger than your resources. So learn now. If you have something, you want to buy a coat or you want to buy a pair of boots or you want to invest in a piece of real estate or you want to invest in a business coach and you haven't been able to find the money, stop saying that. Stop saying that. What's really happening is you're not committed enough. Now, you might be pissed off as all can be hearing me say that, but that is the truth. You're not committed enough, right? So this is why when you say, like, your family, like, you want to stop and just have family time this year, you want to stop and have a baby, and, like, that's fucking bullshit, you guys. Sorry for my language, but it's, I just want you to really hear me. I want to pattern interrupt this thought because it, it, it is a strategy. And what you're saying is I'm not committed enough to that next goal, which by the way, is okay to say, like, let's like take all the pressure off. It's actually okay to say, I'm not that committed to my million dollar business. Just that. But do not say that I can't have it because I have children. Do not say that I can't have a great marriage because my wife doesn't cook for me. Do not, do not, do not, do not say those words because when you say those words, you're handing over your power to the enemy to work in your life right? Those, those ego thoughts, the devil, like all those things start coming into your life and just unfolding things. And then you're screwed because you're 10 feet under trying to dig your way out of your mindset. So make sure that you don't say those things. Just say, I'm not that committed. And at least at that point, you can stop and say, do I like that? Am I good with not being that committed? And if you are, do not let anybody move you off that. But if you're not, Ask for help around the strategy. Ask for help around the strategy. Because what always uh, helps me in my life is remembering that somebody else, and I seek it out, when I had three bulging discs in my back, I never, I never settled for the conversation that I could never run again or that I was gonna have to have back surgery. And I have friends with back surgery and they are righteously convinced that they had to have it. They're, and I don't argue them, I, I don't need to be right, right? But what I can tell you is, you own your life and I own my life. And what I did was I kept saying, there's gotta be a doctor that knows how to fix this. And I was given amazing doctors and they all said the same thing to me, you're going to need surgery. And I just held on to this thought, there's gotta be a doctor that knows how to fix this. Sure enough, I found a doctor, I found a book, and I did a two hour Skype interview with this guy or meeting and my back pain 
released the next day. Uh, that was about two years ago. I run, I can cycle, I can swim, I can go lift weights. I have no back pain. Um, and I still have three bulging discs that are massive in my back. Okay, so why do those things happen? Because you're committed. So I'm just saying, you can have anything you want. I don't believe that you can go after everything at the same time. I believe that you have to focus on a priority and grow, but you can have it all in your life at some point. What I'm saying is don't give up on your visions and your dreams and your aspirations. Have grace for yourself as you build it out and just stop being entitled. Just stop being entitled. And I just want to gift that to you today. So something inevitably is going to frustrate the heck out of you today. And when that moment happens, hear my voice in your head that says unhook from the trigger and stay committed anyway. Unhook from the trigger and stay committed anyway. I'm going to leave it on that this morning, you guys. Um, it uh, We have one more day of coffee with Shanda tomorrow morning. I'm excited to be there with you. I'm actually going to head off and go have a marketplace breakfast, which means that um, my church, my local church, uh, is bringing 400 people together this morning at, at uh, 7 a.m. to talk about business and people who are making millions of dollars and have amazing, you want to talk about amazing marriages. These people have amazing marriages are making tons of money, and this breakfast is about all the people who are ambitious and committed, and money is not a sin. <laughs> it's an incredible thing that the Lord wants you to make a ton of. So I'll leave it on that. Have a great day. Don't hold back, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, you guys. Talk to